Hello guys and welcome back to another unit guide video for the Lord of the Rings Total War mod for Rome Remastered. This unit guide is recorded after patch 0.9.3 so some of these units may uh, be changed before the official release of the mod uh, but as of right now these are where these units are standing so let's just dive in to today's faction which is Isengard and we will give you a heads up as to what you can expect um, when you play as Isengard uh, once the mod goes public granted again some of these units may change I know um, some units are in uh, topics of discussion right now in terms of being changed and their stats adjusted and whatnot but for the most part I think this guide will still be viable to use once the mod is released uh, just because I don't expect too many um, extreme changes when it comes to Isengard because their unit roster is pretty straightforward um, but let's just jump. Let's just jump in. Um, the first unit here we have um, are the Dread Guards. This is your heavy duty, um, kind of kill all anything type unit. Um, most of these, the Dread Guards are like what your general's bodyguards unit will be. Uh, if we take a look at their stats, they have two hit points. Um, they are effective against armor. They frighten infantry. They have really good morale very good stamina and their armor piercing um, but one thing you'll notice with almost every single unit of Isengard is they can't hide and on the camp campaign map they also can't ambush um, I think it's mostly unless you use like Dunlending Warband or Orc Raiders um, yeah almost every other like Orc High unit other than the Marauders here can't hide actually um, so ambushing is not something you'll really be doing a lot as Isengard it's literally brute force but I mean let's just take a look for a little bit um, at the, if I start the battle here and then pause it which this is just a custom battle but take the uh, the UI away here a little bit and just have you guys look at the the models I think they're really well done um, so shout out to whoever was in charge of the design of these models because they're really really cool uh, but yeah, these guys only have 80, but they are very expensive, and they will dish out their weight in terms of cost. Um, oops. They are very, very good units. You can recruit them, I believe, um, in the later tiers, the late military buildings. Um, I haven't played a super late campaign with Isengard at this moment, um, just because there are a few things on the campaign map right now that don't quite make sense. Um that and will be will be adjusted but uh, I have played enough that I have a pretty good idea of what to expect um, but yeah Dread Guards really good units really powerful um, probably see a lot of them with your general's bodyguard unit alright let's go on to your very light infantry um, you have the Dunlending Warband and your Orc Raiders um, as Isengard don't I highly recommend don't use these units um, they're super cheap um, so they are really good at leaving behind in settlements just to help maintain public order. But if we look at their stats here, they got super low morale, uh, 20 and 23. Uh, basically no defense, no attack. Like these guys are just, they're just um, archer fodder really. Um, you hope that the, if they're in your armies, you hope the, the AI focuses your missile, um, their missile attack power on these units rather than say your uh, vanguards or swordsmen or pikemen um, they, they're just they're not worth anything um, and even going to the Urukai Marauders I mean this is your first um, Urukai unit um, they're okay they have pretty bad morale as well they just have a little better melee attack and melee defense um, they're, they're they're okay um, but I mean even by like turn 10 15 you're getting spearmen or axemen or vanguards or even the swordsman units so it's really not I, I've never really used these guys at all they're just super um, they're cheap they have a shield which helps against missile units but they're they're not gonna last very long um, so yeah they're they're low tier infantry class here it's pretty bad um, and all things considered for their cost they're just not worth having in your armies in my opinion um, it's better just to spend a little more money just for their upgraded units which 
will make up the bulk of your forces most of the time. Um, so let's go on to the, um, I kind of have it set up in two different groups for their higher tier infantry. Um, tier four here, or I guess group four, not tier four, group four um, is kind of like what I consider anyway to be, um, how, how do I want to say it, I guess, probably like the the biggest bang for your buck and these guys are like support infantry so um, starting with the kind of support infantry in my opinion uh, the axemen always be flanking with these guys they are they're decent in melee if they're flanking um, seven attack you know decent morale okay defense um, they're very weak against missiles though even though they have a lot of armor um, and just like sending them straight ahead against a unit, they're not going to trade very well. Um, you really want a unit to get pinned down and then send these guys around the flank and just try and cause like a shock um, effect. Um, so I, I, you typically don't have a lot of these guys actually, even with like pikemen and spearmen holding the line and have these guys flanking. Um, I actually end up liking the sword variant better. Just because the sword variant has shields and so a lot of the times you'll see in the mod um, say the AI is going against your spearmen or pikemen they won't actually fire their arrows into those units they'll shoot at other units that you have say your archers or swordsmen um, and so the axemen even though they have you know the Urukai armor here they don't have shields um, whereas both swordsmen variants do and so it just helps them a, a little more against missile units um, Spearmen, moving on to Spearmen, uh, um, how, do I, how do I put this? Um, even though you're going up against Rohan, right? Um, they are okay to get early on, but as soon as you get Urukai Pikemen, don't ever recruit Spearmen again. Um, and I'll tell you why. So this is, uh, I talked to the mod team. Um, and the Spearman unit, even if we go into it, it doesn't actually say bonus versus cavalry, which you would expect, um, Spearman to have. Well, I did anyway. And so I was talking to them because like my, when I was playing as Rohan and I was sending, you know, my cavalry, even flanking the Urukai Spearman, the Spearman were destroying me. And I was like, okay, you know, low tier Spearman doing good against cavalry. That'll be a good start. At least they'll hold them back until we get pikemen. Um, but then when I played as Isengard against Rohan, these spearmen, like, full on just straight up charges from Rohan's uh, cavalry. Um, sorry, cavalry. Um, just shredded through these spearmen because they actually don't have um, a bonus versus cavalry. Um, in which I was told from Rome 1, their unit model is basically taken from, like, the militia hop hoplites if I'm saying that correctly so if you guys don't know Rome 1 the militia units are like the garbage low tier low morale units and so they're really not that great um, they are okay at holding the line um, but they will not suck up a charge at you know if the pikemen were say from uh, like ranking of 1 to 5 I'd give pikemen like a 4 and these guys I would give like a 2 if anything other than infantry charge into these guys, you're going to have a very hard time holding them back, especially when you're fighting against higher tier generals like Theoden, Eomer, um, Gandalf, Aragorn, which you you will fight against them as uh, Isengard because their cavalry units will attack um, because of the leadership that they or the command that they have. The enemy units will fight harder. They will fight longer. Um, and they will do more damage because of that and these guys just get get shredded um, So if you're gonna go with spearmen, which I highly or pikemen spearmen with Isengard Highly recommend the actual pikemen unit, um, which I will discuss once we get there. They're just so much better um, So yeah, just don't put don't put a lot of faith in these guys do not Which I did this I made the mistake I spam spearmen to start with because it was a unit I had immediately available against cavalry. I was thinking spearmen, cavalry, 
um, but they just do not trade well. Even corner camping um, with some missile units and whatnot, they just do not hold the line. The cavalry will essentially get around their flanks and just wipe you down like a lawnmower. So don't put faith into these guys in the late game. You will be disappointed. Uh, but all right, moving on. Um, the vanguards and the swordsmen um, are very, very similar. Um, the vanguards do have a little more, I believe, yeah, it's melee defense while they give up one attack. But they're essentially the same unit. Um, the only thing that the vanguards have over the swordsman unit is the fact that they can form a testudo. So they are a little better protected against uh, missile fire. Um, but really that's all it comes down to. Um, the, the, the swordsmen will get um, shut up a lot faster and more um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, they, they just won't hold as long. However, like, when it comes down to it, they're basically the same unit. This just has a little bigger shield, um, a little more armor. These guys don't. It's a very, very, very close similarity between the two. Um, especially because the problem you'll be facing um, immediately is going up against Rohan, which they're um, cavalry. Cavalry. I can't say that word right apparently today. Um, while going up against elves or something is great to form testudo, but if you like put yourself in a box and then you get smacked by cavalry, all those units are just going to get trucked over. Um, so actually I would say going against Rohan, swordsmen are just a little better, um, just because they're, they're not going to be in that block formation and they have a, a special ability war cry, so they'll... You do the war cry, their stats, you don't see their stats get increased, but it's supposed to increase their um, their like melee defense and melee attack. Um, so it just kind of depends who you're going up against. If you're going up against more missiles, vanguards, in terms of like swordsmen are going to be the better bang for your buck. and Or the sorry, the vanguards. And then the actual swordsman unit is probably more uh, suited for cavalry. Um, all things considered, this tier, they are average to good units. Um, early on, these four units probably will be the bulk of your forces. Um, just later in the campaign, I highly recommend swapping out your spearmen for pikemen, um, getting rid of Ixmen, Ixmen, axemen for berserkers, which actually goes into our next group. Uh, the berserkers are really powerful. Yes, they only have 24 units. They are susceptible to missiles. Um, but they got two hit points. They can go to the Berserk, um, but again, they shouldn't be, kind of like the Axemen, you shouldn't be like taking this unit and throwing it just straight into melee. Um, these are your cycle charging infantry. Um, get to the back, back of the enemy, get to the side of the enemy, let these guys do their thing. They got giant two-handed sword slash axes, or however you want to describe them. Um, they're really good units. Um, just keep them out of um, away from missile units uh, or get rid of the missile units before uh, you send these guys in or get them in range of the enemy missile units or artillery because they will get shot up very very quickly um, so just something to be mindful of that but they do dish out a lot of damage um, pikemen these guys are pretty good if I um, start the battle and put their formation in you can even see they do have the um, Phalanx, the bonus fighting cavalry. Um, it's your typical in Rome, uh, for me anyway, I would do like a V formation in sieges and just let the enemy just run into the spears. These guys do that. Um, they don't have shields, uh, but they do have a lot of armor and their, their pikes do a lot of damage. They'll hold back a lot of the infantry. Cavalry going, you know, smacking straight into it. Um, if you're going to corner cap, Corner camp, excuse me. Corner camp with pikemen, not spearmen. Um, they'll hold the line, and they're just really good units. Um, the sooner you can get pikemen out against Rohan and Gondor with, I mean, even their infantry or their cavalry units, um, you will do tons of damage with your pikemen. Really good unit. Really, really good. Um, and then speaking of missile units now, we'll go on to the three missile units that we have. Um, and so I have this set up a little different. I, I wanted to talk about this because um, in 
my playing of Isengard, I noticed a few things. Um, so one thing, the Dunlending units in general, uh, don't don't get them. They're a waste of your time. Um, their missile attack is good. Um, you know they have twelve, but I wouldn't put more than like two, maybe three in your armies, and that's if you're going up against a lot of armor, which. Um, the initial armor you're going up against is Rohan's cab units, which you have pikemen to take care of them because they're going to be charging all the time. They're not going to be sitting and waiting for, you know, letting you throw your javelins from, what is it, uh, 60 meters away. Uh, you know, by the time they start their, like, javelin animation, they're going to be up in your face. It's just not worth it. Or they're going to be best stuck behind one of your other units, and they're just not going to have a clear line of sight. Um, so just be really careful when using these. Um, it's just not, they're just not the greatest units to have. They're really difficult to make them worth their value. Um, crossbowmen. Um, right now, which I've talked to the modding team and I believe they are changing the crossbowmen. The crossbowmen are a trick. Do not at this point, if, if like, and all this is coming as if the mod was coming out tomorrow. Remember, I mean, it's still in development. Like, some of these things can change, which I will address any changes that, you know, this guide or other guides um, that I make um, once the mod actually releases. But right now, crossbowmen are very useless. Um, even compared, so, for example, the Urukai Scouts, right? This is like your low tier archer unit. Uh, their missile attack is okay. They got a decent amount of ammo. They got a decent range. You know, for their cost and for the amount of units they have, they'll get you a good amount of kills. They're not great in melee, so once their arrows are, you know, once they're out of ammunition, they're basically worthless, but they will get you a good amount of kills. The higher tier um, is supposed to be the crossbowmen, but the crossbowmen are awful. Um, their range is 90. Yes, they have a little more ammo and their missile attack is a little higher, but their, um, actual like firing animation is really slow and really bad. It takes them forever to get a good shot, uh, or to get their shots off, let alone, um, since they're crossbowmen, they're not going to have the arcing shot. And so they need basically a perfect line of sight. So if this, um, enemy unit here was coming to attack this pikeman the archers you know you can have them sit like back here these crossbowmen would literally have to be right there without any other units nearby for them to get good shots off because it takes forever for them to shoot they don't have any armor piercing even though it's um a a cross crossbow which i believe they are looking into adding in um just to make something just to give them more value because um, right now they don't do their damage their range is so bad their anim between their range their animation um, and the actual damage input by the time the cavalry again gets in their range they're getting maybe one shot off you know as the whole uh, unit here and they're maybe killing like two or three units um, so which the bad thing is right now um, they're in, I believe they are fixing this, um, but at the moment, every faction across the board, certain units become unavailable once you upgrade a higher tier barrack. Um, so, for example, the Urukai Scouts, I think, are the tier 1, and then this is like tier 3. And then once you build the tier 3 building, you can no longer recruit or retrain the Urukai Scouts at that certain settlement. Um, so I believe the, the modding team is going to make sure... For every faction that, you know, it doesn't just get rid of units so you can't retrain them or anything like that. Because I have told them and showed them um, that the crossbowmen are just not a, like, tier 3 or tier 4 unit or whatever they are. Um, if anything, it's like a tier 0.5 unit while the Urukai scouts are a tier 1 unit. Um, they're just not good. Stick with the archers for now. Um, between the archers and the pikemen... A few swordsmen. I mean, these guys holding the line. These guys firing um, a bunch of their ammo in. They're you'll you'll do fine with that combination. They're really, really good. Um, but all right. Um, other than that, I mean, Isengard is mostly infantry. They do have war riders. Um, 
It is their only, as of right now, their only monster or cavalry unit. They don't cavalry unit, excuse me. They don't have trolls or anything like that right now. Um, these, these guys are not the greatest. This, they do have armor piercing. They're good against armor, but they're not good against pro and prolonged uh, combat. And the Rohan's Cav will just wreck your warg riders. So really... In my experience, the only use I've had for them is um, running down units, um, which is handy, but at the same time, it's not worth the cost, in my opinion, just to have one unit to do one thing, um, which at the end of it, a lot of the times, you're going to be putting yourself in positions where, um, in, in my experience anyway, like, you play into the faction's strength. So these guys, you know, Isengard, you corner camp, you put yourself in a situation where the enemy can't get around your spear wall while, you know, um, the archers or your other, other units flank, hide them in some trees, get the enemy, you know, to converge on your spear wall, and then these enemies come in and flank them. Um, it's just, especially early on going up against Rohan, their units are going to be able to run down your warg riders, and they're just not worth it. Um... It, it's very difficult to make these guys work because they're not good in combat against cav units. They're very susceptible to missiles. Um, it's just very difficult for them to do something other than just run down units. Um, but that's just, again, my opinion. Obviously, if you want them, go ahead and get them. You can make them work. You just got to really try. Um, and then lastly, their artillery. It's super basic. Um, your typical, you know, catapult unit and um, siege bow. Uh, siege bows um, are really good, actually. Uh, they're good at sniping, um, like, monster units. So, um, trolls, um, mumakil, horses, they got really good range at 240. So, if you're going to do our, um, artillery or get artillery, I highly recommend getting... Um, siege bows. Now that they've actually fixed some monster units, um, the siege bows actually do do uh, excuse me some pretty good damage to um, larger sized entities. So, not that I would get like three or four of them. I would get like a max of two, and that's only if you know you're going up against say Mumakil or trolls for some reason. You know, don't. I I would not put them in a situation. Um, or like have three or four of them in your army, armies because the the AI is going to come at you almost every single time, and you're never gonna really be able to use a lot of its ammo um, because the animation of its like firing animation is pretty slow. So you're not gonna be able to get all your shots off into units um, before they actually get into your front line, which. I wish, kind of like Warhammer 2, I wish they had kind of like a arc of, you know, like, don't put you put your units, say, like, from here on down, um, just because it's like a friendly fire range. They don't have that, and if it's very easy to forget, you know, putting them on guard mode and then, like, fire at will, and then the target that it's shooting at is now engaged with your spearmen, and then all of a sudden you're shooting, you know, your siege, bo your siege arrows into the back of your uh, front line. So just be just be wary of that. Keep uh, keep tabs on them, uh, but they are a good unit to have. And that is Isengard. Um, feel free to leave a comment, leave a like below. Let me know what you guys thought of um, the video. Um, overall, I I do like Isengard. I think there's a lot there that the mod can add to it and change and make them better. But for the most part, I really like their units. Um, being a, obviously a melee focused faction, you can do a lot of things with them. I mean, you can make them a flanking force. You can corner camp. Um, you know, you can just shock and all all that stuff. It's really fun. Um, but for me, it's really just the the detail in it. Um, I think they're definitely giving Divide and Conquer a run for their money in terms of um, unit detail. Uh, it's it's really really cool. Really cool to see what this mod is uh, doing. But yeah, don't don't uh, forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys uh, again soon for the next uh, unit guide or campaign guide. Have a good one.